reminders before we get underway here as a courtesy to your fellow media members and team participants. Please make sure to silence your cell phones. Please make sure to state your name and media affiliation each time you do ask a question. We've got mic holders in the room. Please wait for them to get a mic over to you before asking that question. For those of us joining on Zoom, please make sure to use the raise hand function to ask a question. And we're going to address questions here in the room first before we get over to Zoom, if time allows. And then one final reminder, recording of the press conferences on cell phones and cameras is prohibited. All right, we have Clemson head coach Brad Brownell, along with student athletes Joseph Gerard III, Chase Hunter, and PJ Hall. Coach Brown now will begin with an opening statement from you and then open it up for questions first for the student athletes. Yeah, first off, just what a basketball game. Um, fans were treated to some high level play, especially in the, in the second half. The shot making was elite. Um, credit to Alabama. Give Nate and his kids a lot of credit for uh, the win. It's a huge play for their program, and, and uh, they deserved it. Their, their second half performance was uh, outstanding. And uh, we just, for whatever reason, we had a hard time guarding them. You know, I need to do a better job of helping our players be better on that end. But uh, I'm so proud of my team, and especially these three guys. Um, the ride we've been on the last couple of weeks has certainly been memorable, not just for all of us, but uh, our fan base, which is significant. But, but more than that, just for the kind of people that we have in our program, my players are just such good kids. and. They allow us to coach them, and they represent our university in an unbelievable way. And, and uh, man, it's just a joy. And uh, I love all of them dearly, and I'm just sad that we're not going to get to play more together because we've just had so much fun. And, and this is just such a fun, loving group that um, the hardest part about these losses is it's the end of a season. So, um, But a lot of great memories. Again, super proud of our guys, our team, and what they accomplished. And uh, again, congratulations to Alabama. All right, we'll open it up for questions first for the student athletes. Go ahead and raise your hand here in the room. We'll get a mic over to you. We'll start in the second row. Hey, this is Grayson Mann from TigerIllustrate.com. This is for Joe Gerard. Joe, when you look at this past year as one of the key transfers to come in, looking at how the state of college basketball is now with transfers coming in, what would be your pitch to anybody that's interested in coming to play for Clemson? do it um, I mean this place has been unbelievable <clears throat> and it all goes back to the culture um, really and you know that's what was attractive to me um, the people of Clemson are great um, I think I've you know said that like the first week I got there I, there was cookies at my apartment door from some random person that I still don't even know who it was to this day um, so Clemson is just an unbelievable place there's unbelievable people um, they obviously developed their players um, and they win a lot of basketball games so anyone looking forward to Living in a great place, playing with great people, uh, playing for great people, and doing great things should go to Clemson. We'll go next to the first row over here. <laughs> uh, John Blau with the Post and Courier. Uh, PJ, uh, how quickly can you put into perspective just the enormity of what you guys were able to accomplish or is it still kind of staying right now just because you're coming off the walls? Uh, yeah, so it, it still stings a lot right now. It probably will for a couple of days. Um, I don't think that – you know, it will really set in what, what we've accomplished because we had our eyes set on big goals. And obviously we've, we've achieved great stuff, but we and we came up a little short of what we really wanted to do. But, you know, I think that it will set in whenever we get back and reflect a little bit and, you know, feel the love from the campus and the community to know that they had our backs through all of this. Um, it was an incredible ride. It was an expected ride. And, uh, you know, I'm proud of these guys. We'll keep it in the front row right here. Uh, Darren Carter, Greenville News, uh, for PJ and Chase. Uh, just uh, Coach Brownell just mentioned it was a member ride with you guys. Uh, just how much does this team mean to you both? Man, uh, it means the world, man. You know, like Coach said, these guys, we're all loving. You know, we love each other. You know, we've been through a lot this year, a lot of ups and downs. You know, a lot of people doubting us. But, you know, it's just been about us. You know, and we, we've, been, we've been just about us. And, um, you know, to end like this, you know, it definitely stings. But, um, you know, we accomplished a lot. You know, we did a lot of great things this year. And, um, you know, I'm definitely proud of our guys. And, um, you know, you know, I love our guys. And, you know, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, with the nail on the head, I'd say that, you know, I mean, obviously, like, it stings to the core that we lost the basketball game, obviously. But on top of that, it hurts even more. Like Coach said, he's, you know, you're not going to be with the same team next year, um, especially for older guys like me and Chase and Joe. Um, I mean, it was – it's such a fun group, man. 
from top to bottom, from red shirts to fifth year seniors. I mean, it was an incredible group, and there's nothing I'd change about it. We'll stay in the front row, row right? uh, Facts and Children's 105.5 The Roar. PJ Chase, this is for both of you guys. Uh, can you talk a little bit about just the state of the program from when you guys came in to how you guys are potentially leaving it? I mean, Coach Brownell said a quote a couple weeks back about it's time to raise the ceiling now that we've raised the floor. I think it's safe to say that the ceiling has been raised with the second Elite Eight appearance in school history. Yeah, you know, when we came in, we were highly recruited guys, and, you know, our careers kind of started off kind of slow. But, um, you know, to get to this point, you know, me and him just had a moment in the locker room, and, you know, I told him we made history. And, um, you know, we did some big things for this program. You know, where I think that, you know, with me and him doing that, you know, we set this program to a new standard. And, um, you know, we plan on, you know, keep being in games like this. Yeah. Um, a special moment, man, embracing Chase in the locker room. And knowing, you know, a couple of tournament appearances, um, a lot of wins in the ACC and Elite Eight. Um, you know, it's a stacked up a quiet resume that now is, has, uh, you know, has helped build the program up. And, you know, I, we can attribute that to the coaching staff and the culture they've built, man. I mean, it's uh, we came into a, a, a situation where it was a doubted culture, even though they had such a great thing building up. And to come in here and validate what they've done, validate the, the, the work they do is special. And, uh, yeah, it's amazing. We'll go next to the back row. Joe Reedy, Associated Press. For all three players, you guys had used defense as a strength to get to the Elite Eight. Just in the second half, what do you think Alabama was able to do offensively to, to where it was tough to get stops? Um, yeah, I mean, they hit big shots, man. Um, they really spread us out. They hit a couple corner threes, like three in a row. I mean, it was a 9-0 run. We hit two in a row. I mean, like... If we can get a couple of those to bounce out, it's, it's a different ball game at that point. It's like I said, man, they hit big time shots, and it's just we couldn't quite get the misses we needed them to make. And credit to them, man. I mean, they I mean, they went out there and they hit them. It was big time basketball. Yeah. We'll stay in the back. Mark Myers, AP Radio for Joe. As uh, PJ was alluding to, three point shooting. They had sixteen to eight. The 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 disparity in, in, in the three-point shot, how much of a factor do you think that was in the outcome? Uh, I mean, it was huge. Uh, but, you know, I mean, we knew going into the game that's what they like to do. Um, and, you know, they they shoot them fast, especially when they're making them. You know, when they're making them and their momentum's going um, and they're rolling, um, they get those threes up fast and it seems like they'll never miss. Um, so, I mean, it's unfortunate how it ended, unfortunate how it went down. But, you got like PJ said, you got to give those guys credit too. Um, they put the ball in the basket. Um, they get you know good positioning to get you know open shots, and uh, they just made some plays. Do we have any other questions for the student athletes? All right. We do have one on Zoom. We'll go to Dan. Yeah. Dan Tortora, Wake Up Call DT dot com. This is for Joe. Joe, <coughs> reflecting on your career, and I know you just spoke about it a little bit here, but having this extra season, this extra opportunity, you chose Clemson, and in the same respect, Clemson chose you. Just what you can say about what this entire journey has been to you and this home away from home that's been created in Clemson for you forever. <clears throat> I mean, <laughs> it's tough to talk about right now already. Um, you know, Coach Brownell didn't have to call me. These two guys didn't have to help recruit me, uh, but they did. And these guys are my brothers for life. Coach Brownell is like another father figure for life. And, you know, it's just another home away from home, like you said. And it sucks to talk about already that it's over. Um, you know, I just feel like I just got here. Um, but, you know, I'm going to talk to these guys for the rest of my life. I'm so proud of, you know, what they've become and what they've done. I've watched it, obviously, for four years now, playing against them and then being here. Um, so they've done an unbelievable job with this program. Obviously, Coach Brownell, you know, his, his stuff speaks for itself. Um, and I'm just lucky to, you know, I'm lucky to be here, lucky to have this as another home. And, you know, it's, it's, it was everything I could ask for and more. Final question for the student athletes. Anyone? All right, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, boys. Yo. Thanks, guys. Yep. Love you, boy. All right, we will open it up for questions for Coach Brownell. We'll begin in the front here. Uh, John Blau with the Post and Courier. Uh, Brad, just how different was this game in terms of the shot making that they had and just playing from behind and just constantly them answering? Yeah, um, yeah two different halves. 
Uh, certainly, you know, the start of the game was our way. I, I told the guys before the game the last two days that if we're up 10, we're down 10, when you're playing Alabama, that's about five. It's not 10. Uh, you just cut whatever the lead is or whatever you're, you're up, cut it in half. You're up 15, you're up seven. You're down 15, you're down seven. Because of the, the number of possessions they play with and the freedom with which they play, you know, we were actually down seven, I think, at their place in game one and turned and flipped it and went up six in like two and a half minutes um, at their place. So it's just you just kind of have to know that going in, that you you got to keep trying to win the next possession. I, again, the quality of play was unreal in the second half. It was what people want to see, 50 points for both teams. Um, but, I mean, 10 out of 15 threes by those guys. We had that happen to us at Miami, and, and uh, you're, you just can't win. You know, I told our guys when we won down there, the threes were 11 to 11. Um, 11 for them is normal. 11 for us is a lot. Um, we just needed it to be closer. Um, I'm disappointed in the rebounding because that was something I made a big point of. We, we fought back in the second half with that, but um, Pringle's rebounding was significant, the extra possessions there to keep him alive. Uh, and then Stevenson's shot making. I mean, he's, he's going to be a great player. He is a good player. Um, but you don't count on a guy coming off the bench and making five threes who really hasn't done that yet this year. So they had some guys step up. Our kids played very well. We just couldn't quite get enough stops to win the game. So, um, again, give them credit. They, they played terrific. We'll keep it in the front row over here. Right. Uh, Darian Carter, the Greenville News. Uh, Coach, you've been at Clemson for 14 years. Just putting, um, reflecting on this year's team, yeah. how special is this group to you? Yeah, uh, very special. Um, you know, again, the winning is part of it, for sure. The ride that we've been on these last two weeks, phenomenal. Something we'll always remember. But um, just the kind of kids that they are, right? To be around them every day, the fun that we have, the way they allow us to coach them, the, the connectedness, um, just the togetherness. You know, in this day and age, it's rare. Um, we've been fortunate these last two years back to back and probably years other years as well, but just these last two have been phenomenal runs in terms of you just you just feel it with your team. And, uh, you know, you want so badly for those guys to be successful. And obviously, I, we all wanted to make a Final Four. Um, but you just want your guys to have success because you care about them and you watch them work so hard. And we go through frustrations and ups and downs. And basketball seasons are hard. They're long. You know, there's always – long weeks and a couple weeks that don't go well. And our guys responded most of the time. And, and obviously, after the ACC tournament, a lot of people doubted us. But PJ said it, you know, we really talked at the beginning of the year a little bit and then in the middle of the year that we had that we believe we could be a Final Four team. This was not an accident. Um, one of my assistants, you know, is trying to spout stats that we had the hardest run. If you look at the net rankings, we played the three toughest teams uh, in the net to get to this point. So. This wasn't an accident. Our guys played great basketball. Um, we just needed to do a little bit better today. We'll go next in the back. Joe Reedy, Associated Press. Yep. Yes, sir. Brad, yeah, PJ mentioned just how tough it is to defend when they quickly get three-point shots off like that. Just was there anything that you guys tried to do during the half to counter that or? Uh, run faster. Um, you know, it's crazy. I think it was the first or second possession we tried to play zone. We Joe hit a three, and they threw it up the court and shot a quick corner three before our guys could even get back. Um, you know, the, the challenge for our team all year is we're not very fast. Um, we're big, we're physical, we're tough, we're smart, but we're not very fast. And there are times when that really was a problem for us. Uh, in the second half, it was a problem for us. We couldn't get, couldn't keep them in front of us. Um, when they start making threes, you start inching out in space, you know, and even them shooting before we could get down and get our zone set a couple times, it's just, I mean, there's not many teams that play that way. And so credit to them because it's modern basketball. Um, you know, when those shots go in, it looks great. And 
you know, when they don't, then people probably say that the coach is letting them play too loose and why aren't we moving the ball? But this is modern basketball. You you got to understand all the scores are going up, the NBA, college, everything's changing a little bit. And uh, Nate's done a really good job of adjusting. And his team is, you know, it, it benefited from it today. Second half, especially. First half, we had it the way we wanted. Second half, got a little too quick for us. We have time for two more questions. Go in the second row over here. Hey, Coach, this is Grace, a man from TigerIllustrate.com. Yeah. Gerard just talked about what his pitch would be to anybody potentially interested in coming to play from Clemson, come to Clemson in the portal. What would your pitch be to anybody interested? Yeah, I mean, my pitch is is what Joe just said, right? I mean, um, but I think it's better coming from a player. Uh, you know, there's a lot of great salesmen in our business and a lot of guys that sell a lot of things that don't end up being what they really are. I'm proud to say that what we talk about at Clemson is real. And Joe Girard had got the experience that. Um, we just have tremendous people. We have great leadership. We have great administrative leadership. We have unbelievable athletic support. We have tremendous coaches. Um, it's an unbelievable place to live. It's why I've been here so long. My girls went to school here. Um, and since we got our facility renovated in 2017 18, we've been to a Sweet 16 and an Elite Eight, another NCAA tournament. We've got a couple guys in the NBA. I don't know why you wouldn't come here, to be honest with you. Like, I always tell folks at the end of the day, guys like Joe Girard, we're doing them a favor because this place is special. Now, that guy was unbelievable to have. Um, his swagger is why we went and got him. His second half shooting is why we went and got him. But the real reason is because of the kind of kid he is. And he just showed who he is right here. In, a, in one of the toughest moments of his life, he's explaining in detail how much this place meant to him. So he's about the right stuff. And that's why he fit our team. And that genuineness is why these two guys wanted him to be a part of our program. So, again, I couldn't be more proud of our players, uh, what we did uh, beyond these two weeks, but just the way these guys carry themselves every day. All right, one final question. Right here. Hey, Coach, Facts and Children's 105.5 The Roar. Uh, can you talk a little bit about your special relationship with P.J. Hall, who's going to go down as a program legend, yeah. might have his name in the Raptors one day? Yeah, he should. Um, I might get choked up. I'm trying not to. Um, <clears throat> he's obviously very special because he's a top 50 kid that chose Clemson from our state. And we've tried on a bunch of other guys, and he's one of the first ones to stay home. And we've been selling this same thing to all these other guys. You can come to Clemson and have a chance to play in a Final Four. Uh, you, you're going to get a great education. You can be a pro. You can be an all-conference player. You're going to be around people that care about you. That kid's been through the war. He's had major surgeries. Our, our athletic department has flown him to see the best doctors to take care of him and treated him like the superstar that he is. But the best thing about him is that he's just a regular guy, and he's the same every day. I coach him harder than anybody in our program. He allows me to do that. And one of the reasons why our team is in the Elite Eight is because our best player allows the head coach to like be demanding of him. And so then the tone is set for everybody in our program. And so we have discipline. Um, we have accountability, uh, we have respect, and uh, a lot of it is because he's the way he is as a young man, and his parents deserve an unbelievable amount of credit, and uh, it's been a pleasure to coach him. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. <clears throat>